Today we are taking a look at some of the hottest Pokemon cards of the past week, but before we do that, we have to talk about the Blooming Waters Premium Collection. Now this was leaked a while ago on Poke Beach. This is coming out in February. This is a new 151 product with 12 packs. We got some promos. These look like just the normal cards with the Jumbo Blastoise. So I, these are the same arts. I don't know if they're going to have a different number and technically be promos. I think they will be. So I guess if you're doing promos in your master set, you're going to need to pick this up. What's exciting about this box is packs are expensive. They're hard to come by right now for 151. This kind of reminds me of the Sea and Sky boxes from uh, Sam's Club, right? Similar, that was Crown Zenith, right? So uh, it's Blastoise and Venusaur being featured. And these packs, you know, the thing about this product is these are going to go fairly quick, most likely. However, if they're like the Sea and Sky boxes, they were pretty available for a while. So hopefully if you've been looking to rip some 151, this is going to be your opportunity. We don't have an exact release date, but it should be sometime in February. So I'll update you guys as we get an exact release date moving forward. But for now, this is kind of exciting news. Uh, I'm probably going to be picking some of these up just to rip uh, and maybe a few just stash away in the sealed collection there. But this video is supposed to be about the hottest singles. And if you guys are not familiar, TCG Player has another website called TCG, TCG Player Infinite, where they highlight some of the hottest cards of the past week. And one of those cards on this list was the Mimikyu. The Mimikyu, you know, and this card, this is not surprising. This one was of all the Pokemon Center promos. Uh, Mimik I feel like Mimikyu is a popular enough Pokemon. And this one was lagging behind, but check out these numbers. On the three month chart, 395% gains. This went from a $6 card three months ago to a $33 card. But the last sold, it ain't done. Last sold, 42, 44, $45. So we'll just call this a $45 card now. That's way above where the chart, sometimes the chart lags behind, right? Cause it's gotta get more sales data. So I'm gonna have a few more days pass. In the past month is up 152%. We'll zoom out to the one year chart. You can see pre-release prices were at $7 and a low of $4. Massive, massive gains to have been made here. I did not look up what these are going for in a PSA 10, but I bet those prices shot up recently with this as well. Absolutely massive gains for the Mimikyu uh, Pokemon Center ETB. I can't remember if these are still available on the Pokemon Center, for the Pokemon Center ETBs, uh, but if they are not, if they are, they're gonna get snatched up pretty quick. Then we have the Gardevoir. We've talked about this card recently. It was lagging a little bit far behind because the Bubble Mew from this set, the Charizard, they were taken off. This was the third most valuable card. I thought popular enough Pokemon should be taken off. And it did, it finally did. It was a $40 card a month ago and it's up 50% in the past month, $61. Last solds we're seeing 60, 60, there's a 45 and then 60. There's even down here, there's a 75, 78, 68. So we'll see where this card ends up. It's nice to see this card getting some attention here. The three month chart, it actually, so it came down a little bit. It was 48 and it went down to as low as 38. So the three month chart's only up 25%, but we'll zoom out to the one year. Pre-release prices were 68. So if this can get up to and surpass those pre-release prices, that'd be nice to see an all time high for this Gardevoir. Next up, just real quickly, I just wanted to remind you guys if you if you're new to the channel or whatnot, this this is the channel. If you guys could subscribe, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. We're at we just passed 8k. On at 10k, we're going to be doing a pretty decently sized giveaway. We're going to have three prizes. I think we're going to do Surging Sparks booster box, probably a 151 Japanese box, and a PSA 10 of some sort, like hundred dollar value. So there'll be three winners. If you guys want to enter, you will have to be subscribed to the channel and then I'll make a dedicated video when we get a little bit closer to 10K. So uh, just real quick, make sure you're subscribed. Uh, also, you know, daily content. So um, the Screamtail, Pokemon Center promo. I, I, I'll, first off, absolutely love this card. The, the ancient Jigglypuff, just screaming. Absolutely love it, by the way. Same thing, uh, same thing with the, the Mimikyu, right? It, this was pretty stagnant for a while, although it was higher, 15 bucks, 16 bucks, right? on the three month chart and 52% gain, it really shot up to $23. In the last month, it's up 47%. Zoom out to the one year, 89% on the one year chart. Yeah, $9 was the low for this card. Nice to see it. Uh, 
the, you know, these, these stamped promos, people are really coming around on them. And it's not really surprising when you see what some of the bigger stamp promos are doing, right? <clears throat> um, last sold's are around 21, 35, 28, 24, 24. There's some 30s in here. So a little bit all over the place. There are only five of these currently listed on TCG Player. So there's some interesting info for you. Even the Noctowl. So the Noctowl, I thought was from Stellar Crown. It's a pretty decent promo. Gen 2 Pokemon, right? I thought it was pretty good. Thought it would, thought it would do well. 50% up in the past three months. Pre-release prices were at 22. It went down as low as 17. There are only 25 copies of this on TCG Player. And I do believe that Stellar is definitely has PC ETB still available. But in the last month, big gains, almost 75%. That's really crazy right there. Looks like most of the sales were right here at around $20, and there were a lot of sales to around $35 mark. So this last sold, we're seeing 40, 38. Yeah, so not many available. Supply and demand, that kind of makes sense. Then we have the, this is the Squirtle from Stellar Crown as well. It's nice to see some cards from that set doing well. Now, not as massive of gains as we've saw on some of the other cards, but 13% in the past month is pretty decent. It's on the three month, you can see Pre-release was around 52. This card went as low as 38. And it's up around $50 now, with last solds being 54. But then it goes 40, 44, but I don't know where, where this 84 came from. <clears throat> so that's the Squirtle. 88 copies currently available on TCG Player. And you know we're going to talk about the Bulbasaur as well. This is the one that I pulled on my booster box. 13% uh, up in the past month. Once again, not as big as some of the other percentages on this, but... I felt like it needed to be included. This the artwork with the Pidgeys and the Charmander too. They're they're top tier. We'll zoom out. So here you can see pre-release prices were up at fifty four, and this went as low as thirty dollars. So pretty decent gains there. A lot more copies of this available. One hundred and forty eight listed on TCG Player. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we have. So I remember seeing this, but for the life of me, I can't remember where you. Where do you, let me know in the comments, where did you get this Pokemon Together stamped Pikachu? I, I can't remember. But if you're talking about percentage gains, 215%. And this is what's wild. So this is at like 40, we'll just call this 40 bucks. It was three months ago, it was 12, went up to 40. The most recent sales are 71, 71. So there's a 72, 70. So the percentage is about to absolutely take off. There's only 14 of these listed. Yeah, I cannot remember what these came from, Where you, how you got these, but... So yeah, let, let me know in the comments, I'd like to know. But the one-year chart, oh, we don't even have to go to the one-year. The six-month chart will do it. So $14 and a low of 12. So those are, that's insane. From 12 to 42, and it's actually at like 70, from 12 to 70. So yeah, stamped promos in the SV era are doing, overall, really well. And you know what, something that made this list... Something we don't really talk about too much. And once again, not big percentage, but it's really nice. So this is a Sun and Moon promo. We got the Eevee and the Snorlax just chowing down on some food. Super adorable. It's up 13, almost 14% in the past three months with about 4% in the past month. We'll zoom out to the one year. 47% growth, it's pretty solid growth. You could have had this at as low as, it was around 21 bucks and now it's at 34. However, the last solds are a little less than that. 28, 27, but then there's a 50, 37, 33. So we'll see where this card ends up. This is a cool promo. Uh, we don't get to talk about the older eras quite as much. It seems like it's all SV right now with a little bit of um, Sword and Shield sprinkled in. Next up, these should be, I think these are from, okay, we're talking Surging Sparks now for a little bit here. The We talked about the Gold Pikachu, how that card was taking off because these cards are really, really hard to pull. And in the past, gold cards just haven't been as valuable as they should. And while this is only a $23 card, the growth on this bad boy is at 76%. So that's that's quite the, it's pre-release was 13 and then it came down to like 12, right? So there are only 33 copies of this currently available. I don't think this card is going to do super crazy numbers. It's about a little under half the price of the special illustration rare, but it's harder to pull. I do like the special illustration rare more personally. Uh, I think, I don't know if that's on the chart, but uh, we might pull that up one up in a second. So yeah, uh, this is nice to see the golds, but still not, you know, getting big money. I think 
Executor is a popular enough Pokemon, but maybe this version, like I don't like this version as much, except for on this card. I kind of sound like a little bit of a hypocrite. So this is special illustration where it's about 50 bucks. I wanted this card to keep dropping because honestly, I really want this, like the way he shines, it just the Florida Christmas tree of everything of it. We're coming to Christmas, right? I don't have this card yet. I was waiting for it to fall. I'm glad it looks like it's done falling though, which is, mm, right? I wanted to be in like the 30 range, but it is it is what it is, okay? I'm gonna get my card. Uh, Pre-release was 93, it's down to, see it went down to like 49, came back up to 50. So yeah, I, personally I do like this card better. It's the connected art card with the execute. Um, I want to. I'm gonna pick up. Uh, I wouldn't mind picking up a PSA 10 copy of this, but I think I might pick up a raw, maybe a few raws, and grade and get a 10 that way. Uh, I don't know. Just it's just one of those weirder cards that called to me. But this is this is on the list because now we're going uh, off for some cards that are really falling off, big losses, right? So 45% down. This is is not really surprising at all. This is kind of what we used to see a lot more of with new set releases, right? Not every card is going to fall off like this and things, some cards take off and they go up more since release. Even the, the Pikachu SIR is, it's come down, but it's still up off pre-release. So the Hydreigon, uh, similar situation. This one's just still just coming down. Pre-release prices were 120 bucks and now it's down to 73, 72 ish. These are, if you missed the video with the pull rates, special illustration rares are one in 960 packs on average. So the execute at 50 bucks is a steal. You'd have to open a lot of packs to get that. So uh, if you're looking to picking up those singles, it's usually best just to buy them. Then we got the, the Lysia's Appeal, which is really, really straight down on this chart. Uh, when you look on the three month, the one month has it a little bit more level, but it really went from 160 and it's down to $60. That's not really a big surprise either. Probably not the most popular card. Uh, it's not maybe the, um, I don't know what the Japanese one is, the waifu scene. I don't know if that one's doing well. Haven't really checked into it, but not really surprising for me either. Then the Pikachu. So this is the last card that we are going to talk about uh, on, you know, for this one still, you could look at it as big gains or big loss, right? I still think it's on the big gain side because it's up 50% from its pre-release prices. Now, $300, it ran all the way up to almost 600 and now it's around 460 so it's still way higher than the Greninja. But something I do want to note is that the Greninja chart, I'm not saying that this is going to happen, but it is possible. Anyways, the Greninja chart, you know, it after release, it went up and then went down and then went up again. So that's some, this is something I'm just keeping a close eye on. I'll update you guys if things start to move crazy. But yeah, it's it's really leveling out around 460. 460 seems to be the bottom, right? It would last sold 460, 460. There is a 500 in here, 470, 450, 460, 500. So we'll see where it ends up. Currently, lowest listed is, if we could get these people with their darn Japanese cards out of here, uh, 450. 450 and 470 is lowest listed currently. Yeah, I, the Japanese, every time it's just bothering me. Anyways, TCG player, not that you're watching this video, but if you are, you guys got to fix that. Why did you add a section if you don't make people post in it? Anyways, um, so yeah, the Pikachu uh, is just something I'm keeping an eye on. If it follows what the Greninja did, it, it would go on a run again and surpass this. We'll see. It, it, once again, one out of 960 packs, very popular Pokemon, if not the most, it's got to be the most popular Pokemon, right? 54 currently listed on TCG player. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it ends up. People are opening product. People are ripping this product. So supply and demand, more supply is coming into the market. And we'll see if the demand increases or stays the same. And that's going to dictate the price. But in summary, those are the cards that mostly are on a tear, right? They're on a big run. Some of them, uh, like more recent set, Surging Sparks, are kind of falling off a little bit. And, and that's normal. In, in times past, you know, the, the advice would always be to wait. Wait a month, one to three months, pick up your singles, right? Prices are dropping. And, you know, that hasn't always been the case. Kind of starting with Twilight. For some cards, yes. For the big cards, no. So, you know, we'll, we'll see where things end up. Um, also, the, the Blooming Waters Premium Collection 
you know, it's nice to it's nice to see that, right? We we know what that product's going to be, which is cool. Packs, you should be able to get packs at MSRP, right? That I think that's really good. Uh, it's going to be good for those who haven't been able to, you know, to get packs. Maybe you want to just rip some. You want to do a master set, whatever it may be. I think that those are very good. Uh, the promos, honestly, are and they're not going to do anything, in my opinion. I don't. I wish we would have got actual new promos like new cards, but it is what it is. So I don't think the promos are anything to really, uh, you know, lose your mind over. That's going to be right. I, I don't know. We'll see. But um, it is exciting. 151 product coming. Um, the market is still crazy. Things are still really strong. Po uh, the Pokemon Center stamped promos, obviously really taking off. And uh, just the exclusivity of those uh, people, for whatever reason, are really latching onto those. If if you can uh, be happy with the non-stamped, then just be happy with the non-stamped because otherwise you're going to start to really pay a big premium for those Pokemon Center stamp promos, especially if you're getting PSA 10 copies. However, if you're on the other side of that, if you have a stamped copy of anything, right, um, and moving forward into uh, Prismatic, sorry, Prismatic Evolutions, those cards are gonna do very, very, very well, right? The Magneton from Surging, the Eevee. If you have a clean stamped promo and it doesn't really mean a whole lot to you, consider grading it. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to have a membership anymore, which is uh, kind of wild. I'm gonna go off, I'm gonna talk about that just for a little bit. There's, I, I feel a little bit of both ways about the GameStop PSA thing. Um, first off, for, the casual, like just, you know, you're getting into it, you're newer, or uh, you've been in for a little bit, but you haven't graded, and you're wanting to wanting to get your first cards graded, I totally understand. It can be a daunting, a daunting task, right? And for a while, I was thinking about, because I've, you know, I've, I've graded quite a bit, I made some grading videos in the past, and I, I was thinking about offering a service for, like a middleman service, where I'll submit your card, Right, and I'll take a look at it. I'll give you pre-grades and everything, but I don't, I don't think that that is an even a viable option now with GameStop, because you can just submit your own. You can submit one card for fifteen bucks. Submit a few cards, and you know most of the time, even you don't have to pay the membership, the PSA membership, right? So I'm paying the PSA membership, and most of the time I'm not even, I'm not even always getting fifteen bucks, right? It's like nineteen with the discount, or sometimes it's fifteen with a promo with a special, right? But then. You have to pay, if, if you're doing it yourself with PSA, you still have to pay the shipping, right? And, well, so, which sometimes the trade-off is you're shipping it, right? But if GameStop's shipping it, they are going, if it gets lost or stolen, they're going to reimburse you. You'll get refunded, which if you only get that if you ship to PSA, if you insure the package yourself, which, you know, doesn't always happen or can be a hassle to go through like USPS or wherever you shipped it to go through that. Um, so you don't have to worry about it. You're gonna get your money back even if it gets lost. However, the other side of the coin is I have heard people say, I'm not letting I'm not letting those GameStop employees touch my cards. And there has been concerns of the employees swapping cards out. Say, um, say they have, you're submitting, what do I have here? Um, you're submitting the Latios, right? And you're worried that the games, like in your copies mint, right? You're t nicely centered up, everything's looking good, but you're worried that the GameStop employee is gonna put their Latios card in and take yours because yours was better. I'm not really, I wouldn't really be too worried about that unless you're talking, unless you're talking like Moonbreon, uh, the new Pikachu, like very expensive cards. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't personally worry about that, but I totally understand where people are coming from with that. I think at the end of the day though, I think it's it's good for for new people, good for collectors. They can submit cards at an affordable way now. And I do think that it's very good for GameStop. Uh, you know, I don't know how much money they're making per card because they're obviously paying PSAs, you know, they're paying PSA less than the price. They have to be making something. So uh, that is interesting. And I GameStop, you know, uh, if you're not familiar, you can buy a lot of graded cards 
on GameStop, especially if you have the pro membership, usually for pretty good prices. Sometimes some of those go up real quick and people buy them out uh, because they're like less than market because they don't always keep, markets can change really fast. I've seen some people in the Discord server get really lucky with those. Um, anyways, that is going to end it for this one. Uh, I do think the GameStop grading is a good thing. Some of these cards are popping off. The Blooming Waters collection has me excited. That's pretty much the summary of everything. Um, but yeah, let me know where that Pikachu card came from. Also, if you're this far, if you're 20 minutes in and you didn't subscribe when I told you to subscribe before, you obviously enjoyed the content enough. So just subscribe. Daily, daily videos, right? I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.